Hi, I'm Chef Frank, this is Proto Cooks, and today we're making tuna tartare. Here's what I got for my tuna tartare. Extra virgin olive oil, Dijon mustard, red chili flakes, capers and brine, sea salt, lemon, chives from your garden, some root vegetable chips, and of course, some really good tuna. When it comes to eating tuna raw, you wanna get a really nice piece of tuna. Um, and there are a couple of determining factors that you can look at to see if your tuna is actually really good, okay? First factor is smell, right? When I get close up to this, there really isn't much of a smell. And if there's any smell, it smells like an ocean breeze. If it smells like low tide, don't eat it. You don't want it to smell fishy. Um, if you can get that close to it and it's kind of just like a neutral smell, that's a good thing. The second determining factor is the texture of the fish. Is it firm? I wanna be able to push down on it and it to spring back and not leave a dent. If it leaves a dent, it's getting old, don't use it. The third determining factor is color, right? Uh, if your tuna is like super bright red, sometimes it's been treated with carbon monoxide. So sometimes when you go into supermarkets and the tuna is like super bright red, uh, it's been treated. So you don't necessarily need it to be super bright red, but this is a really nice color. If you look at it, it looks kind of like a nice maroon and that's what I'm looking for. A really nice deep red color, not super bright. Basically what you wanna find is a fish person that you trust. If you buy fish there often and frequently and you trust them, you could probably get your tuna from them. This piece of tuna is a sushi grade tuna and that's what you want. Usually in the business we call this a number one tuna, but you wanna get something that's definitely sushi grade. I got this tuna from a place called Pagano's in uh, Norwalk, Connecticut. When I worked at Barcelona Wine Bar, this is the company we use for our fresh fish. So they have wholesale, they have retail, and that's basically where I go to get fresh fish. I wanna talk about price as well. Price is not a determining factor in the freshness of the fish. Sometimes you have a place that charges a lot that it's not fresh. But if it's bargain basement and it's on sale, chances are they're trying to move it and get it out of house and it's getting old. So if you find the bargain on tuna fish, don't use it for raw fish. Don't, just don't. That's like gas station sushi, don't do it. All right, we're gonna cut the fish now and I'm gonna wear gloves, couple of reasons, right? First of all, I don't want my hands smelling like fish for a few days. Second of all, even though my hands are clean, hands carry bacteria, right? And when we're in the restaurant industry, anything that's not gonna be heated over a certain temperature, you should wear gloves, right? The other thing I have here is a second cutting board. So this cutting board is where I'm gonna cut the skin and the bloodline out, right? So this tuna has the skin on, it also has the bloodline, right? Uh, could you eat the bloodline? Sure, but it's just not very tasty, right? So I always try and have a cutting board that I take the skin off because I don't really want any sort of uh, the bacteria on the skin to get onto the fish that I'm going to actually eat. So I use a separate cutting board for this and this is how we go about it. All right, so I'm gonna get my knife and I'm just gonna follow that line of the bloodline and I'm gonna run my knife along the skin and take that off, okay? This goes on to a clean plate. I'm gonna remove this. Now you're gonna say, chef, that's really expensive. Um, what can you do with that? For the most part, for me, this is kind of like a cost of doing business, right? You're always gonna have a little bit of tuna on uh, that's left that you really just can't eat. So unfortunately, this has gotta go away. What we're gonna do now is take the tuna and dice it up into nice little pieces. This is a big piece of tuna and I'm probably not gonna make tartare with all of it. I'm probably gonna grill some of it. I might actually make a little sushi with the rest of it. So I'm gonna use about a third and the rest I'm gonna wrap really nice and tight in some plastic wrap and keep in the back of my fridge where it's the cold. One of the main factors with this is you want to keep it as cold as possible in the bowl and on the on the board. Uh, again, I'm gonna wear gloves because this is not gonna be cooked, right? So put your gloves on. And for my tartare, I'm gonna take this top piece off, right? Uh, that's usually the more tender piece. This is what's lying next to the bones. This piece is next to the skin. It's usually a little tougher and I'll use that for something later on. I have my bowl close by, I have my tuna, and I'm just gonna cut this into nice thin slices. Right, you see that? Nice thin slices. Like butter. Now you could probably eat this just like this too. Slice it nice and thin. Put it aside, I'll probably grab two pieces at a time. 
right? And then I'll dice this or make it into sticks and I'll dice it. This uh, tuna tartare is actually very similar to one we used to make when I worked at this restaurant called Barcelona. My family really likes it. Uh, I've just taken it, made it a little different. I like a little chili flake in my tuna tartare. So it's slightly different than that. Uh, I'm just doing dice, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just gonna do a nice dice of this. You will still wanna taste tuna. You wanna make sure that you're getting um, the texture of the tuna. If you dice it too fine and you grind it up, it's probably not really gonna have that great a texture. It's gonna be kind of mushy, uh, more like a poke, not so much a tuna tartare. So I'm gonna just dice this up into my bowl, right? Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna clean my cutting board with some hot soapy water. Even though it's wood, I'm still gonna use some hot soapy water, clean it really good, clean my knife. In the meantime, I'm gonna take my tuna and put it in the fridge. I have enough here for about three or four portions, depending on who's eating, right? Uh, and what I'm gonna do next is cut my chives. You'll notice that I have my chives, and I picked these from my garden, uh, but I have my chives in a wet paper towel. Not wet, but slightly damp. Any herbs will benefit from this. I've stored my herbs like this all the time. Uh, if you leave it in a, just a damp paper towel, it really keeps them well, right? I don't know if I need all these chives. Uh, I want some onion flavor, but not like overpowering. So I'm gonna cut these, cut them in half. And when it comes to cutting chives, you wanna make sure that you have a very sharp knife. Nice and fine, right? Uh, if you don't have chives, what else can you use? Shallots. You wanna use shallots, you can use red onion. What's great about a tuna tartare is that it's super, super versatile. Um, you can do this with Asian flavors, you can do this with Mediterranean flavors like I'm doing now, and it's just super versatile, you know? The main thing that I want you to remember is, is that you're spending a lot of money on this tuna, right? If you're getting good fresh tuna, you're probably spending a lot of money on it, so don't overpower it too much, okay? You wanna make sure that it, you still taste the tuna, right? And tuna in the raw like this is kind of meaty and, and delicious. Okay, my chives are in there. I'm going to add some of my capers. Capers are a, uh, basically a pickled bud from, from a bush in the Mediterranean. And they kind of have a earthy flavor, salty, a uh, little pungent flavor. I'm going to add a nice pinch of my red chili powder or pepperoncino. Uh, and then I'm gonna add some mustard. Again, we don't wanna overpower. I can always add more if I want. I'm gonna add some extra virgin olive oil some regular salt and pepper. You remember that your capers are fairly salty, so you wanna be careful with this. Black pepper, and then some fresh lemon juice. The thing with the lemon juice is what's gonna happen is once you add the lemon juice, this is gonna to start to cook or change color and turn from kind of red, it's gonna to start to like get a little cooked on the outside. So you wanna be careful of that. Uh, so you wanna mix this basically just a few minutes before you're gonna serve it to your guests or to your family, okay? So some lemon juice and give it a good stir, right? Look at that, oh my gosh. I can tell you right now, I'm so excited about this. My camera lady, very excited, okay? So we're just coating everything, right? I'm gonna test with my Star Wars tasting spoon to see if we need more seasoning. Okay, we need more oil. I can still taste, I can still taste my uh, tuna, a little more on the capers, and a little more lemon juice. I think we need also need a little more uh, salt. Good. The mustard is right on the money. Look at that. Just so it holds together, I'm not gonna double dip, but I'm gonna take my spoon. Mm, we're good. Mm, really, really good. Excellent. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna plate it up and give it a taste. Okay, let's plate it up. I have a nice scoop of the tuna. Just make a nice pile of it right there. So I have enough for three to four people. You can plate it up for them. I'll put this back in the fridge. 
right? A little bit more extra virgin olive oil over the top. A little bit of my sea salt. This is a smoky sea salt. I think that goes really well with this, just to give it a little more season. And I bought some chips, right? I bought these um, because they're easier to buy and that's a whole other video making these, but they're root vegetable chips. And the reason why I chose the root vegetable chips is because they're a little sturdier than potato chips. I don't really like crackers with this. I think they go really well with this. And that's it. That is my tuna tartare. All right, let's give it a taste. I got a little chip here. Let's put some on the chip. Let's give it a little. Mm. Mm. Really nice. Give a little more taste. <laughs> so good. Tuna super fresh. You get the capers, you get a little lemon, a little mustard. Absolutely delicious. And that's my tuna tartare. Remember, you can have fun with this. Soy sauce, scallions, ginger, you wanna put some wasabi in there. Uh, you can mess around with this however you want. You can put some Calabrian chilies and just have fun with it, right? It's a great appetizer to serve to your fancy friends that eat with their pinkies in the air. And it's a really good kind of like little toe dip into eating raw tuna. So if people are a little afraid of it, um, it gives them kind of like a little gateway into eating it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Check down in the description for Need Salt merchandise. Uh, we also have a P.O. box down there. And I want to thank my patrons for supporting us. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I want to thank everyone that watches our videos. We just broke 100,000 subs. Thank you so much for watching and supporting us. Uh, and that's it. That's my tuna tartare. I'm Chef Frank. This is Proto Cooks. Have a good one.